Hello again, this is Peter Gade with the USMLE RX Step 1 Express team, and in this section of pharmacology, we're going to talk about toxicities and side effects. There's actually not that much to talk about, but there is a lot to memorize. For example, on this page, you see many of the antidotes that are used in certain drug toxicities, and fortunately or unfortunately, the mechanisms of actions of these toxin antidote pairs are not very high yield, but test takers are expected to know them. There's really no way to predict which of these drugs and antidotes will pop up on the exam, but there are a few pairs that you'll hear about more often than others, especially when you get to the hospital wards. These include acetaminophen, which is treated with N-acetylcysteine, beta blocker overdose, which can be treated with glucagon, digitalis, which can be treated by normalizing a patient's potassium, giving lidocaine, giving neutralizing antibody, which are known as anti-digitalis FAB fragments, as well as treating with magnesium. Just a brief point here, the anti-digitalis antibody is not actually the whole antibody. It's just the FAB fragment, which, as you'll recall from immunology, if this is our antibody structure, and I've just drawn the heavy chain, here is our light chains, and of course they're connected to each other covalently. The FAB fragment is actually here. It's just the antigen-specific portion of the antibody, and a recombinant version of these fragments can be given so that they can bind digitalis and sequester it, and thereby minimize its pharmacological effect. Another important pair is heparin, which can be treated with protamine, and finally warfarin, which can be treated with vitamin K and fresh frozen plasma. You'll remember that some of the clotting factors require vitamin K for their synthesis, Namely, these are the factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. So by providing vitamin K, physicians can promote the new synthesis of these factors. However, this doesn't happen immediately. Some of the half-lives for these factors are as much as 72 hours, and so in order to immediately replete these factors and prevent further bleeding, in the case of warfarin overdose, physicians can give fresh frozen plasma, which already includes these factors. Thus, in the case of warfarin, you give fresh frozen plasma to immediately replete the factors, and then vitamin K to promote their endogenous synthesis. So again here, we pointed out about five pairs, but to really nail those extra points, you really should have this full list memorized. It won't be the funnest thing you'll have ever done, but coming up with some good mnemonics may help. And of course, if you come up with some particularly good ones, send them along to the first aid team, and we can include them in the next edition of the book. The next three slides I'm going to show you here are actually organized by organ system and are lists of clinical signs, symptoms, and syndromes that may be caused by a specific pharmacologic agent. For example, in the hematologic section, agranulocytosis can be caused by a number of pharmacologic agents, which we've listed here. And these have been mentioned in other chapters, so we won't go over them here. But in the pharmacology section, we just wanted to include it in one part of the book so that you can refer to this and perhaps revisit it after you've studied each particular organ system. Again, to nail those extra points, you'll have to memorize these. And we've tried to provide some good mnemonics toward that end. Just going through this quickly, you'll see that we have several drug reactions that affect the cardiovascular system, the hematologic system, the respiratory system, the GI system, reproductive and endocrine, musculoskeletal, renal and genital urinary, neurologic system, and then here we've listed drugs that cause adverse reactions in more than one system. For example, the polymyxins, which are a class of antibiotics, can have adverse effects in the kidney as well as in the nervous system. Again, it's a lot of stuff, but we would suggest learning about these drugs and these drug reactions in the context of the organ system, and then coming back to this page toward the end of your board studying when you really want a sort of last or quick review of these associations. Finally, we'll mention adverse drug reactions that are caused by allergies to sulfa drugs. Patients who are allergic to sulfa drugs can develop fever, a puritic rash, stevens johnson syndrome, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, agranulocytosis, and urticaria, or hives. A severe case of Stevens-Johnson syndrome is actually pictured here, and this can actually become life-threatening. Thus, patients who have a history of allergy to sulfa drugs should not be given any other drugs in this category, many of which are listed here.